Hi, I'm Holly with Renaissance Wine Merchants. This episode of Great Tapes will take us on a journey from the rapids of the Bow to the Patio River Cafe and Summerhill, Canada's largest certified organic winery. Get ready as we explore the natural sources of wine and food found right here in Western Canada. So Summerhill, this is the original property of Summerhill. Uh, Stephen and Wendy Sipes bought it in 1986. Uh, it was originally 65 acres, it's expanded to 80. And in 1991, Stephen Sipes, Wendy Sipes and myself started up a little winery out of a four bay garage up by their house. And so there was cold water and no drains and, and a lot of tarps and, <laughs> and a press that was outside all the time. You see, at that time we were focused just on sparkling wines. We still make a lot of sparkling wines, but we still have a whole complement now of red and white wines as well. That would be another change. And of course we didn't have a pond, we didn't have big parking lots, so we didn't have that big pyramid over there. <laughs> we had a small pyramid, which we used to fondly and lovingly call the cardboard teepee because Steve made it out of recycled materials. But it wasn't great when the, when the rains hit it. We have to work a lot smarter as well as harder. Um, we have a lot less tools. With the organic certification, we actually have a third party independent body. And what that physically looks like is I'll actually come in and grab a bottle off the shelf and say, okay, I wanna know who picked it, I know when it picked, I wanna know the name of the truck driver, I wanna know when the truck showed up, I wanna see all your bin picking tags, and I wanna follow it all the way through the winery and every single process and how it came to be into this bottle. There are some challenges, of course, when we want to go fertilizer, we can't pick it off a shelf somewhere in pellets. We have to get Omri certified organic chicken poop, you know, from Armstrong. And it is challenging to get people to grow organic. For a lot of people, they think it's just big, hairy, taboo thing, you know, that it doesn't matter what you do, you know, you're, you're going to, you know, pestilence, be pestilence ridden and you'll have no crop and, you know, and everything will go to hell in a handbasket. And that's just uh, a lot of the... Uh, the myth that's out there. We think we're a bit like the hub and we'll put the spokes out and, and uh, you know, and hopefully that will start to germinate even more vineyards, seeing that there's a better way and a different way. We want this habitat because we want a balance of the good bugs that will take care of the bad bugs for us. So it's, we try to use what was already given to us to enhance the whole microflora of the canopy. I'm Kyle Moody. Uh, retail manager at Zinn.ca down in Inglewood. Uh, when I'm not spending my days uh, at Zinn, I'm spending it on uh, the Bow River here right in Calgary, right in our uh, own backyard. The Bow River is worldly renowned and known actually in Canada as probably the number one quality fishery for both rainbow and brown trout. Uh, it flows right through town. It's about 623 kilometers long, all the way from the Rockies right through until the North Saskatchewan. Fishing is, is absolutely phenomenal, so we'll see if we can uh, we can do a couple for you. life throughout the river. Obviously with aquatic life becomes a big bug life. Um, obviously under surface and you know on top of the surface as well and the fish have just thrived in this river system for for a long time and for years to come for sure. Hi there, I'm Andrew Winfield, uh, executive chef of the River Cafe in Calgary. Today we're pairing organic Pinot Gris from Summerhill Wines with a local produced smoked trout. And we're going to have that with some potato bellini and a little bit of corn succotash. So first we're going to start making uh, goat cheese sauvignon with a uh, local Farrow's Farm goat cheese. Uh, we're going to take a bowl over simmering water, we're going to add some egg yolks, we're going to add some vegetable stock, white wine, we're going to add a little pinch of sugar, and we're going to start whisking that until we get a really nice frothy rivet on top. Take it off, start cooling it off on some ice and still whisk it to cool it down. Uh, and then we're going to add the goat cheese right away into it. And then we're going to start whisking some cream on the side. So once the cream actually gets to a really nice frothy stage, we're going to take that and then fold it back into the cooled savignon. So now we're going to start making a uh, tapered corn and fava bean succotash. 
I start that off by sauteing some peppers, some shallots, some garlic. So the garlic scapes are a nice kind of tops to the garlic we're getting. Really potent flavor and nice tender crunch to them. Start sweating that all down to get them nice and soft. Then we add in the corn and the fava beans. Keep it going for a little while. And then we have some fresh dill and fresh chives that we're going to chop up really quickly and add that in to finish it. So now we're going to start by frying some smoked potato bellinis in a cast iron. So now putting it all together, we're going to take the bellinis out, add them to the plate. Uh, so Cunningham smoked trout. We're going to take that, add a little of the warm succotash over the top, drizzle some goat cheese sabayon, and then we have some fresh borage flowers from my garden at home that I picked this morning. So the Get to Know program is a program put up by the Robert Bateman Foundation. Most kids in the schools these days only know maybe 10 wild animals, but they can recognize two to 300 corporate logos. So this foundation goes out to the schools and teaches uh, young kids about wild animals. Uh, we donate a buck a bottle, and it's a great program to be involved with because it is unfortunate that every, you know, a society keeps pushing us into the techn technology world. We keep getting separated from the natural world. And so it was a, for us, it was a very natural thing to support. There's a better balance uh, between the land and the grapes. And what you're getting flavor-wise, I find, is a lot more intense. There is a significant um, increase in the amount of sugar-free extract or minerality in the grapes uh, from biodynamic and organic growing grapes. So that's what I'm seeing anyway. It's evident that organic practices seem to be on the rise, and there's a renewed appreciation for the local bounty found right here in our own backyard.